Iranian state media says women don't like the Chador because it's too expensive. Don't worry, guys. The regime, they finally figured it out. That's the reason? That's the yeah. reason? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, sure. Okay, sure. Wow. Oh, my God. So let's God. get into it. On July 9th, the state-owned First News Agency published an article stating that the country's women do not like to wear the black chador, which is a modest floor-length cloak secured under the chin, common among Shia Muslims, because it's too expensive. On July 16th, the news agency repeated the statement in an article titled, quote, Why Black Chador Isn't Sold at Government Prices. Quote, the Islamic hijab is the most expensive clothing, the most difficult to find and afford. Not only have we failed to manage the patterns of consumer behavior in society and to lay the appropriate groundwork, but our adversaries have planned to ex how to exploit them and have directed the garment industry and market towards their own goals, reads a statement from the newspaper um, Resalat on July 22nd. So basically they're saying, this too is the fault of the West. A business journalist in Iran said, quote, hair salons charge about uh, $94 US dollars for trimming and coloring. An ordinary black chador costs less than $31. So any change in women's behavior is not down to price. After living under the mandatory veiling laws for years, Iranian women have gotten bolder about showing their discontent. In 2014, Iranian journalist and activist Masi Alinejad kicked off the, quote, My Stealthy Freedom campaign, which grew to be a large movement challenging the compulsory hijab law. Yasmin uh, Ariani and Sabah uh, Korda Kodafshar are two of the many women imprisoned in Iran for their civil disobedience of unveiling in public. So I thought this news was hilarious because <laughs> don't worry guys, a national movement to publicly unveil, unlike we have seen in years, just kicked off this summer. We finally figured out why women don't wanna wear hijab. We finally figured out why these freaking whores won't just cover up in public. <laughs> It's because it's too expensive. That can be the only answer. Why do women hate it so much? If it was more affordable, they would be running. They would be running to cover themselves, to guard their modesty, if only it was more affordable. Armin, I mean, what do you think about how in touch with the people... <laughs> You understand the media the chador. is the chador is like um just a piece of cloth. Like just it's just like literally a long piece of cloth, right? It's not there's nothing um I mean I have been to the poorest villages in Iran, okay? And I've seen people who can't afford food, they have the chador. Right. So it's it's actually the opposite. Like the outfit that is not the chador is actually is worn by women who are often more higher class or have access to more money. Like, let me actually show you some comparison. Right. So. Like these are these are these be liberal Iranian women. Like so they are these are people who probably wouldn't wear any hijab if they didn't have to. Right. Because like they're showing a lot of hair or wearing makeup. Like. Right? So this is like kind of like more upper class Iranian, right? Like for example, like this, this is like Iranian woman in probably somewhere in upper Tehran or somewhere like that. Like these be, they, they, this is like, they're spending money. Okay. This is the, this is what they're, this is what they're spent. This is how they, the rich people, this is how richer people go out. Right. Like for example, let me see more. Yeah. So like, yeah, the outfits like this, like you, this, this person is spent some time trying to look good. Right. But if you actually look for pictures of like poor Iranian woman, like some like a beggar or something, hold on, let me see if I can find this one. Like, look, like I'm not saying all the Chadoris are poor and all the non Chadoris are rich. Right. But you can see like, yeah, like this is like this lady, this beggar lady in the street, she's wearing a Chador. 
It's literally a just long piece of cloth. Like it's nothing else. A chador is like a just like a, you could turn anything that is not a chador into a chador as long as it's a, a long sheet. piece of cloth. Yeah, you could turn a bedsheet into a chador if you wanted to, right? So yeah, like this, how is this expensive? Like she literally doesn't have enough. Yeah, like oh yeah, this is what I'm used to seeing. Like if I go to the village, like the old granny um in a village. And this is the chador. Like, do you think like she's like spending extra money because like, oh yeah, if she wasn't like she was like she's poor, like she has but the chador was so important to her that she spent extra money to be able to wear the chador. Like, no, this mm -hmm. is like the affluent woman, this is like this is what they wear. Right? So, but yeah, like these, this is the chador. It's just a long piece of cloth. But I don't understand. Like, are they saying how has this got to do anything with um, Americans? <laughs> like, how are they making the they chador more expensive? They said that somehow the adversaries of the regime have exploited like the supply chain of the chador <laughs> industry and like how to make it more difficult to acquire. I don't know. <laughs> like how like for why but like they are they they are so against iranian women to wear the chadors and they have somehow okay so first of all the the non-chadori hijab okay it's also cloth okay the chador is also cloth okay the difference is that you need to do more with cloth to make it not not a chador okay when it's the chador it's just like a flat chador okay so if the chador is more expensive the everything else that is a hijab that is not a chador would also become more expensive because you have to do more with it so i want to know how did they manage to uh disrupt the supply chain that that make a flat piece of cloth more expensive but other forms of cloth they remain the same price okay i don't understand how they managed to do that but that is like they you know um and also why like, are the Americans and the Zionists like, oh, this Chadori woman? Because like they are trying to corrupt the mm. Islamic Republic's women, mm -hmm. fill their heads with whorish nonsense, right. like being unveiled. Because that's they like, know, because they know. Because they know that if women can be unveiled in public, it's the end of the regime. You know, that's actually what they, I don't know, Susie, how do you know this thing? But like, this is a serious claim. Like, this is what they say. Like, a lot of. Yeah, no, uh, it's true. <laughs> a lot of Iranians, religious Iranians, think that the strength of the Iranian regime comes from the fact that women be hijabis. Okay. This is the foundation. This is like what keeps it strong. I don't know how. I think like they are, oh, yeah, this is how they connect things, I think, right? This is like religious people, man. They like so they're so good at connecting random things together. Okay. So um a lewd woman, okay, a woman that is not wearing the hijab is the best way to take out a re to to take to uh, take down an empire. And they think they are an empire, right? Because the foundation of a society is built upon a family, okay? And the woman, a mother, a mother is the heart of the family, okay? So to go after, to, to take down a society, you target the mother. And you target the mother by making her interested in being a slut more than a mother, okay? And this is like the, the enemies of Islam and the enemies of Iran have recognized that there's no other way to take down Iran other than targeting the family unit and to do that you have to go oh after God. the woman and this is what the, this is why hijab unlike other countries this is why the hijab has made Iran strong because it has kept the family together it keep family strong family strong country strong that's how they think I'm okay. like a typical conservative it just always <laughs> goes back to my family um <laughs> Wait, I need, I need my meat, my family meme. Oh my, my god. Um <laughs> the uh the what I I actually agreed but in the opposite sense. I think the power of the Islamic Republic comes in their fascist ability to control how you dress in all aspects of your life. So if you mm. challenge that, then you challenge essentially all of their power and ability to flex themselves within your private life and private sphere. So women publicly unveiling is actually one of the most serious, incredible threats to 
the legitimacy of the re regime itself. Yes, because it's showing a weakness within the authority. Like it's showing that the the your, the claws are on the Iranian women are loosening. The the chains are they're being unchained. And if they can get out of the hijab, what else can they get out of? Like, and that's why they're terrified. That's why they want to make sure, like, they don't know what to do. Should they, should they, you know, so should they make it mandatory or not mandatory? If they make it not mandatory, are they sending a signal that they're weak? Okay, but if they keep it mandatory, are they giving more excuses for people to rebel? So they're, like, in a dilemma. Like, they don't know what to do, right? Uh, and they're, like, trying to, like, within the hardliners themselves, they're kind of, like, they're kind of uh, divided on this. Like, they're like, oh, my God, this mandatory hijab is, like, the end of us. And some people are like, no, not keeping the job mandatory. That would be the end of us. So the hardliners are like fighting each other on this as well, right? By That's the way, this is an, yeah. By the way, this is an acknowledgement of the fact that the the chador is very unpopular. Okay, so I know the reasoning behind it, like because it, the Iranian That's regime, true, actually, good point. Yeah, because okay, so the Iranian regime understands that, like, has signaled all the time for the past forty years that the best form of hijab is the chador. OK, mm -hmm. more Chadori woman is kind of a suggestion that more people are with the regime. OK, mm -hmm. and so for you to go through these 40 years and less and less women is choosing to wear the Chador, it kind of looks embarrassing. It kind of looks like, hey, maybe like more people are not interested in this in the in the strict version of Islam. Right. And it, it basically questions the uh, the. The popularity of the regime like it's a visible indication of how unpopular the regime is like That's because true. they don't have they don't have referendums like reliable polls and referendums so but people can see with their very eyes in the street like okay more people are moving under the, like it's so apparent mm -hmm. to everybody so they're desperate like wow. okay everybody can see that the chador is not that popular so we need to and they're acknowledging it right so mm -hmm. they're just coming up with an excuse to justify why, why, why this is happening yeah fascinating wow um, Muhammad is making crying faces and saying the West is sanctioning our hijab. <laughs> <laughs> it somehow always comes back to, yes, so we have this problem. Things aren't going well and it's the West. <laughs> so our designers, our designers. I'm technically the same Yeah, thing. true. Sheikh B is saying so typical of conservative communities to keep their honor in their woman's body. Yes, exactly. Um, should be is also the entire saying, society's honor is between our women's legs. That's what they're saying. Like everything, yeah. everything, the foundation of everything is real, is based upon how much we can control uh, our, you know, the vaginas in our society. That's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Shakeby is also saying you have no idea how much "quote unquote" family values is used by Pakistani in Islamists. And D is also yeah. getting quite angry over family values. I think <laughs> like most people who are liberal get like a very gross, icky feeling in your stomach when you start hearing people talk about family values because it almost yeah, always means religious traditionalism. It's just it's just a d code word for religious traditionalism. Um, yeah. Engaging American and saying it sounds like she Shia Iran needs some Chinese characteristics. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God! Yes, this meme. Vin Diesel's in. There's nothing stronger than family. Yes, I got it ready. Thank you. This I is can't... what I'm talking about. Yeah. He, American just... is also saying it wouldn't. Wouldn't it be better to just let people do what they want and lower the credit scores of families who, of women who don't wear the chador? Perfect oh, solution, yeah. Asian American. Thank you. Yeah. Great idea. Oh my God. That's scary. Oh, okay. So that was the last of the start comments. This mm -hmm. video, we didn't want to play this video. Like, no, right? Like, we already. Oh, no. It was just about the arrests of um, uh, Ariani and uh, Kordashar. Kord Kordashar. Yeah. yeah, more more women in Iran are fighting against the regime by uh, violating the law and publicly taking off their job, which is amazing. Yeah. It makes um, a crackdown like we haven't seen in a long time. Yeah. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship.
Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.